Welcome back students to our Chemistry 1510 video notes. In this video we're going to talk about naming molecular compounds. Specifically we're going to talk about naming binary molecular compounds which means they contain two elements. So let's first remember that a molecular or covalent compounds means that those atoms are sharing uh, electrons between two or more nonmetals. And so because we're talking about binary, we're just going to stick with our two nonmetals. When we start naming these, because there's no ions involved, we have to tell the reader how many of each element is present in the compound. The reason we didn't need to do that for ionic compounds is because in ionic compounds, the, um, the ions were always in a ratio where they had to cancel. And that's not the case anymore because there are no ions, the electrons are being shared. Atoms can come together in multiple types of ratios. So for example, C and O can come together with one C and one O or one C and two O's. And so we need to be able to communicate what the compound is. So let's start by looking at the name and going to the compounds formula. So first we have selenium hexaiodide. So for selenium hexaiodide, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the formula for selenium, SE, and then iodide is speaking about iodine. So I'm gonna take the I, I'm gonna put it there, and hexa means six. So I have six iodine for every selenium. Let's take a notice that here where you have the A and then the I for iodide. In this case, when you see multiple vowels like that, you can actually keep all of them. So when you're talking about iodine compounds, you don't drop any of the um, vowels that are coming from the prefix. Let's look at tetraphosphorus decoxide. So tetra is the prefix for four, and dec is the prefix for six. So the symbol for phosphorus is P. We are being told that we have four of them. Oxide is O for oxygen, and we're being told that we have 10 of them. Let's take notice here that deca is actually the prefix. But we don't write deca oxide, we drop that A. So if we have AO or OO combinations occurring from the prefix and the element being put right next to one another, then we drop the first letter. Let's look at another example that contains that idea. So this one's dinitrogen tetroxide. Nitrogen is N, di means you have two of them. Oxide is O, and tetra means you have four of them. Notice how it doesn't say tetra oxide, because again, this is another example where we have an AO combination. If we have an AO or an OO, we drop the first letter of that double vowel combination. Our final one is boron mononitride. Boron is B, and nitride is N, so this is BN. So when you look through these names, recognize that you always have to tell the reader how many there are of the second element. See how we included mono? And if there's only one of the first element, you don't need to include mono. See how we didn't include mono up here in front of selenium? So we don't need to do that. So at this point, we're probably ready to go the other direction. And given a compound's formula, generate a name. So here's some examples. I have nitrogen and then I have bromine. What we do is we write the name of first element and we include the prefix if needed. It's needed if you have more than one. 
So you only have one nitrogen here, so I'm just going to do nitrogen and leave it at that. Then we're going to tell the reader how many bromines we have with a prefix. So try, because there's three, and then we're going to take the word bromine, we're going to drop the ending and add IDE. So we will write the name of the second element, changing the ending to IDE, and adding a prefix. So a lot of times students will now ask, why are we changing the ending here to IDE? Because they say, well, we did that in ionic compounds. Why do we do it here in molecular compounds as well? Well, if we're talking about bromide, bromide is an ion. And I think that's where this question really stems from. But the problem is, if I just write nitrogen tribromine, then people aren't going to know that those two are connected in a chemical compound. It just looks like you're saying that you have nitrogen and bromine, especially if you're looking at the next one. So for HBr, you're going to write hydrogen, you only have one of the second element, and you end with bromide. This one, nitrogen, so I'm writing the name of the first element. I only have one of the second one, and you might write mono and then write oxide, but then you have that OO combination where you always drop the first O of that double vowel. So I'm just going to erase that first O and then I'm going to scooch this over so that there's no space. The next one is iodine and there's four of them. So tetraiodine and then nine oxygens, non-oxide. Remember that non is really nana, and I'm dropping the A of nana and then putting in the oxide. The final one here is has two phosphorus, so di phosphorus. Watch your spelling on phosphorus. Phosphorus, fluorine, and sulfur are the three most misspelled elements on the periodic table. And then try oxide. Notice how here you do not drop double vowel combinations if they include an I. So we've got one more little mini section, which is special names. So you have seven diatomic elements here. These elements exist in nature as pairs instead of singular atoms. So what I mean by that is on Earth, you cannot find a singular completely alone hydrogen nor a singular completely alone nitrogen. So we don't call these dihydrogen or difluorine or dioxygen or whatever. They just go by their element name because that's how they exist in nature. So sometimes you'll see hear people say hydrogen gas to help illustrate that we're talking about H2. So these ones you need to know that there's they're just plain old named after their element symbol. There's other compounds that you might encounter that have specific names. There's some examples here. This is just a kind of, um, oh, I guess, introduction to what might be in your future if you have to take more chemistry. You might see these things that people call common names. And also, there are these names, which are organic nomenclature, which is my personal favorite. So we'll save these for organic chemistry and you might run into some common names along the way, but they won't be things that I ask you to name um, on exams. But your favorite one, of course, is dihydrogen monoxide, which you commonly know as water. So dihydrogen monoxide would be a good way to illustrate that that's the IUPAC name, the international standard for naming is would be called dihydrogen monoxide, but people call it water on a daily basis. We are going to be using the standardized names during the course of the semester. As always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.